Dear class of 2024, let me begin by wishing you all once again a very warm welcome. This is an unusual start to the academic year. I should be meeting and greeting all of you personally, but we are living in strange times. The pandemic has caused fundamental disruptions to the way we live and work. All over the world, people have had to make major adjustments to deal with the uncertainties and unpredictability caused by the crisis. It is perhaps not an exaggeration to say that we are moving in and toward uncharted territory. In such times, many of you may feel anxious, powerless and lacking in control. Embarking on your college journey, a period of transition and change in the best of times is now made all the more challenging because of what is happening now. And for the international students, moving to Singapore may be an exciting but at the same time disorienting experience. When all that is external is changing and volatile, we must look within ourselves and find stability in something that is intrinsic. Here I'm referring to our values and principles. Values represent our convictions about what is important. They shape our attitudes and guide our behaviour. As a college, we must embrace a set of core values that should guide how we behave and function as a community. Months of deliberation and reflection with all members of the community, including our students, took place to decide what core tenets lie at the heart of our institution. These have been distilled into core values which I will now share with you. I hope these values will be the hallmark of your Yale Anywhere experience from the start. First is transformation. A Yale Anywhere education is not just an intellectual journey. Our unique living and learning experience aims to shape you into a person that is well-rounded and holistic while continuing to push the boundaries of knowledge and scholarship to make a positive impact on the world. In your time here, you will develop the capacity to live and study in a diverse environment. Learn how to have difficult conversations with people who may hold very different beliefs, to balance work and play, all of which we hope will mean that you will leave the college a better and different person than when you entered. But transformation cannot happen without exploration. We are firmly committed to open inquiry and academic freedom. You are actively encouraged to take courses and join activities outside of your comfort zone and discuss issues of the day, debate them rigorously, but with much respect and empathy. The common curriculum is perfect for this. I encourage you to keep an open mind as you study subjects which you may not have had interest in or knowledge about previously, for only by venturing into the unfamiliar do we open ourselves to the possibility of change. Attend as many rector's teas as you can and take part in the numerous talks and discussions happening at the college throughout the semester. At Yale NUS, we have students from over 70 countries and a plethora of cultural, social and educational backgrounds. Respect is thus a cornerstone for without which such a diverse community as ours could not hold together. Why not challenge yourself to have a conversation with someone whose life experience is different from yours or who might hold very different views? While respect is foundational, we strive to go beyond mere tolerance to understand, appreciate and celebrate our differences with the value of inclusivity. We are all part of this community and Yale and US should be a safe space for everyone. It can only work if we all try to make this happen. As you settle into your new suite, ask yourself, how can you make Yale and US home, not just for yourself, but for all around you? Finally, care for one another and yourself is a key. A proactive concern for each other as individuals and for the community as a whole, especially important in a time like this. Do also make sure you take time out for yourself when the going gets too busy or hectic. Think not just about what you can get out of your experience at Yale and US, but what you can do 
to enrich it for others. You will face difficulties. Some of you, and not just international students, may feel homesick. For the first time, you may fall ill and not have your loved ones here to take care of you. You will face unfamiliar, sometimes scary experiences. Take care of one another. Be kind to one another. Support one another through all this. That is what being a community means. As you get swept up in all that is new, classes, extracurricular activities, exploring a new country and culture, I remember also to take time out for yourself amidst the whirlwind of activities. Spend some time to ground and center yourself and figure your own internal value compass, which will guide you in the weeks, months, and years ahead. All of these values, transformation, exploration, respect, inclusivity, and care, shape the college's decision and policies. The value framework helps provide us with our grounding and identity as a community. I hope that you will take all these values to heart. Putting them into practice will shape you into the citizens of the world that we hope you will become, making positive changes, big and small, both within and beyond Yale and West College. Class of 2024, welcome again, and my best wishes for the exciting journey you're about to embark on. I look forward to seeing all of you in campus soon. Dear class of 2024, I take it that you are all here by a mix of choice and circumstance rather than accident or error, and that you are, on the strength of that fact, excited by, or at the very least open to, the idea of a liberal education. The purpose of a liberal education, generally speaking, lies in the advancement of its participants' knowledge and understanding of the human condition and the world within which they live, and will inevitably look to alter in all its vagueness and variety. It should, as Maxine Green once said of art, enable us to see more in our experience, to hear more on normally unheard frequencies, to become conscious of what daily routines have obscured, what habit and convention have suppressed. It is for this reason multidisciplinary in its essence. And in the coming days, you will encounter, or perhaps be made to encounter, with varying degrees of enthusiasm, the strange and beautiful ideas animating the arts and the humanities, the sciences and the social sciences, ideas which collectively reveal the finest intellectual achievements of the human spirit, past and present. But beyond working to stretch your mind across this vast constellation of ideas, a liberal education is further committed to the development of thinkers, minds intensely independent, critical, creative, charitable, generous. It does so in part by committing itself to an interdisciplinary approach, which calls upon its practitioners to stand between disciplines, to move across them, to bring together the methods, rules, techniques, and knowledge of one discipline with those of another, so that they may look upon a curious scene from diverse perspectives, raise questions that have never been raised, or give answers that have never been given. This does not, it should be said, entail the death of the discipline. For an interdisciplinary approach is only as strong as the disciplines which compose it, and there are merits to specialization, which is itself of great importance to the advancement of knowledge. The point, rather, is that crossing the narrow streets of each discipline could expand the range of thinkable ideas in as yet unthinkable ways. So, dwell in possibility as Emily Dickinson once said, be passionately curious about everything, whatever you're calling. Learn about Einstein's accounts of general and special relativity, about Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, or of the possibility that at the bottom of all matter lies filaments or strings vibrating in different patterns. Take pity on Schrodinger's cat, which must endure the terrible condition of being both alive and dead just before measurement settles its fate. Learn about the structure of Shakespeare's sonnets, mostly of three quatrains in a couplet, and their rhythm, the iambic pentameter. Be struck by Jane Austen's magistral use of free and direct speech and irony 
to bring power in convention under scrutiny and critique. Learn about Darwin and evolution, and from it, how there may yet be artistry without an artist. And learn of the grand importance of equality, that the words, deeds, ambitions, and dreams of all should receive an equal hearing. Be deemed as having equal significance, regardless of the color of one's skin or the direction of one's sexuality. Put, where appropriate, the ideas you will gain from the different disciplines together so that we may grow in our understanding of the complex world within which we live and conjure up new solutions to old problems. Now, you might say that all of this sounds rather too difficult. It will be difficult, but nothing worth doing is ever easily gained. You may say that taking classes outside your expertise is risky. It will come at great cost to your grades, to your hallowed GPA. I will not pretend that grades do not matter at all. Far too often, and regrettably, the world will ask that you announce your accomplishments before it will assign you your worth. But your grades will recede in significance with the passage of time. And what you will be left with are your experiences, or the memories of your experiences. And they might, perhaps, be of greater value when you look back upon the events of your life. And finally, you might say that there is no practical utility in knowing about philosophy or literature or some of the other arts or even the more theoretical sciences. But we do not always know what is useful until it becomes useful or is made to be useful. And that is entirely in your hands. In any case, the complexion of your life the meaning of existence is not to be curled up in a single dimension of utility narrowly defined. To borrow the words of Whitman, you are large, you contain multitudes. Let your time here be one of discovery and creation. Thank you. Hello, first years. Some of you already have seen me and added me on Facebook, but I'm Hazim, currently a junior majoring in PPE. I'd like to first congratulate all of you for joining Yale NUS and matriculating here. It is a step in the unknown, whether you come halfway around the world or even the island, amidst the uncertain COVID-19 situation, to embark on a new journey in your life. Many of you will be exploring an unfamiliar environment in an already unfamiliar situation, with many questions on what exactly can we expect? Question on what's the common curriculum like? How is the student life going to be? What kind of activities will I be joining? The most amazing thing about Yale NUS is the vast number of opportunities that you can dabble in. From pursuing your research interests, joining a new performance art or sport, and exploring the experiential learning opportunities at SIP. You will never run out of things to do. Events as well are commonplace here at Yale and US, and you'll start to notice the constant refresh of posters in the lifts. But more than activities, you'll be meeting and most likely already have met people from all over the world. Different cultures intermingling with the same burning passion for growth and change. But with the vast number of opportunities, it can get overwhelming. Doubt can and will settle in. Being surrounded with so many amazing people, it is easy to ask one, do I feel good? Will I ever be good? Will I ever be good enough? Coming out of high school, military service, or even your gap year, Academics will need settling in. Concerns over the writing rigor or familiarity with the English language is only natural. The fear of missing out will always be there. Should I join as many student organizations as possible? How about adding on an internship with all my other commitments as well? How do I continue to keep pushing myself? How can I make sure my time here at Yale NUS is worth it? In a sea of events and people, it will be easy to feel lost, confused, and sometimes even lonely. But even with your chapter remaining uncertain, there's one constant at Yale and US, and that is community. 
I remember very clearly in March, staring at the sudden announcement on my computer that students had to move out because of COVID-19. Before I became the president of the student government, I had to oversee summer storage, an initiative for students to store items over summer. And at that moment, I was just thinking of the enormity of the task of facilitating the process of moving hundreds of items and accommodating hundreds of students. My mind completely froze. But because I knew I had about 12 hours to have a concrete plan, I had to start typing. And when I started sending out the announcements, messages poured in from everywhere, encouraging me to press on. And if I ever needed help, people were there to lend a helping hand. In the lifts, the people I bumped to, they had a spontaneous, all the best, or tiayo. My sweet mate stuck with me through thick and thin, volunteering to help move the bulky items from the storage area to the holding location. Despite not being affiliated with StuGov at all, I had a fully supportive team as well who ensured that we met all the objectives. And moments like these are bound to happen. It could be your final assignment deadline, late night dance rehearsals or competition trainings, when you feel like you've hit rock bottom. But around you, you have your sweet mates and teammates, friends who will take care of you, buy bubble tea from across your town, or make Indomie late at night amidst the midnight conversations. One thing is for sure, you will definitely have an Alaman supper. And I strongly recommend cheese fries with butter chicken. There will be chill sessions at the Batri where you're all cuddled up or singing your hearts out at So Far So Good. More than sweet mates, you have the care and support of your OGLs and RCAs who will constantly be on the lookout for you. Till today, my OGL joins my suite for game nights and my RCA pops by when he's back on break. And there's so many others as well, from seniors, faculty, staff, and even alumni. During the move out, the alumni gathered to create an emergency fund to help those in need. Similarly, if you want to start something, it's as simple as grabbing a friend and just starting it. As you embark on this journey, know this for sure, you'll never walk alone. You will find your voice, your story, and your narrative right here at Yale NUS. Thank you. Welcome to the new Chandana College members of the Yale NUS College Class of 2024. We are excited and pleased to have you join our residential community, which is and will continue to become your home at Yale NUS for the next four years. I am Stephen Bernasik, the rector of Chandana College. The rectors at Yale NUS are charged with leading the intellectual and cultural life of the residential colleges by providing programs and example contributing to your education in the residential college setting. Before I speak a little more specifically to you about what that charge means in my view, I want to briefly introduce you to the team of faculty and staff associated with Chandana College who will be here to assist you in various aspects of the journey you are beginning. Many of these folks you have already met during check-in and orientation, but I want to officially introduce them to you here. They are essential sources of information and assistance, and you will get to know them well during the coming years. I mentioned just now that you're beginning a journey, embarking, getting into the boat, literally, on a journey of discovery, of expansion, of questioning, and of integration. This journey does not just last these four years, in fact, you have already been on this journey during your lifetime, and this journey has la landed you on the shores of Pulau Chandana and the larger community of Yale NUS College at this point. And it will continue for the rest of your life after these four years here. This period of the journey is an important one, though, and I want to welcome you to this part of the journey with a few thoughts on what you might encounter here and later. First of all, Travel 
changes people is an old saw that has a lot of truth in it. Journeys are not meant to be sightseeing trips. Journeys are often difficult. Journeys involve struggle and hardship, but also incredible insights and aha moments. They also shape your outlook and your character and your ability to contribute to your community. These four years may be the culmination of your formal educational journey, or they may be just another step along the way, but this is a very important step to be sure. Those of you who have studied Latin or who have an interest in the root meanings of English words may already know the source of the word educate. It comes from the Latin verb educare, to lead out, leading one out of a forest or a cave or a complex map of city streets is certainly consistent with this idea of education. In the context of a journey, I also like the idea of education as being, in a sense, a willingness to throw your hat over the wall, forcing yourself to confront something new on the other side of the wall if the journey is to continue and if you are to continue having a hat. This journey of discovery will involve the discovery, not just the collection of new facts, new ideas, new and uh, interesting ways of thinking, and new and different ways of being. This journey of expansion will demand making space, intellectually and culturally, for these new facts and ideas and experiences. This journey of questioning will cause you to examine what a new idea or way of thinking or being actually means to you as an individual, as a member of this community here at Yale NUS, and to the broader society. Remember that questioning is also a struggle. It means not just accepting what your professor or rector or parents or peers say, but struggling with these new ideas and concepts. This struggle will take place in the classroom and in the laboratory for sure, but also in your conversations with your sweet mates, your classmates, and with the broader community. It will occur not just in your intellectual life, but also in your cultural life and interactions, as well as in your spiritual life. This journey will also be a journey of integration. This is another English word with an interesting Latin heritage. It comes from another Latin verb, integrare, meaning to make whole. In four years, at the end of this portion of the journey, you will be a different person if our common efforts at educare have been successful. You will have made whole in yourself a series of discoveries, expansions of mind and character, and questionings of these discoveries and expansions, resulting in an integrated you that will continue this journey throughout the rest of your life. The good news is that this never ends. You will continue this journey for as long as you live, always discovering, expanding, questioning, and integrating. Welcome to this part of the journey, and welcome to Chendana College.